Hey guys, Dr. Deuce back again with some more great audio production tips and techniques for you. Now in today's video, I'm going to be focusing on the tools and equipment that you'll need when you decide to set up your own home recording studio. These production tools are very affordable and definitely produce great results. Now to start off with, I'm going to break things down into three distinct groups. First of all, your straight ahead beat maker. The individual who's all about making beats, who's all about the software, being in the computer, composing and producing those beats or those instrumentals, not so much interested in recording vocals or live musicians, maybe grabbing a sample here or there, but let's just call that group the beat makers group. Now the second group I call the engineer, producer, singer songwriter slash rapper. Now these are individuals who actually probably compose music but also record vocals, maybe their own or other people, other artists coming into their studio, into their spot to record. They record, they edit, they engineer and they produce an overall package with the composition. Now the final category would be a band or small group. Now, a group of individuals who maybe write and record together and maybe want to track the whole band playing together in one go and therefore need maybe a bit more in terms of inputs and outputs. So let's get into it. Okay, to start off with, the first thing you're going to need is a good microphone. You've got the option of condenser or dynamic. You always want to be going for a condenser in your studio, especially if you're recording a lot of vocals. I'd say for everyone, whether you're a beat maker or anyone else in the groups, you should have a microphone. Beat makers, maybe you want to uh, record the odd sample here or there. Then if you don't want to spend uh, on the condenser, then get a dynamic, but just do have a mic. Um, for those of you recording vocals, go for what's called an LDC, large diaphragm condenser. Something like this is an AKG. Um, you can go for, you can also go for something a bit more expensive, a much bigger microphone. There are so many out there to choose from, but I'm going to tell you the ones that I've used and I recommend and I know work really well and the ones that are affordable. Now this microphone right here is the Audio Technica AT. 2020. It's a fantastic microphone and it gives you superb results. I've got a little label on the front here to remind me which side the pickup is facing. However, it's a fantastic microphone. I've used it on many productions and it will cost you about $99. It will be money well spent. So this is a microphone I definitely recommend. Definitely give you some excellent results. For an extra $100 or so, you can get the AKG C214, which again is a fantastic microphone made by a well-respected microphone manufacturer and of course as you know the prices keep going up if you're starting out i definitely recommend something like this now the next thing of course you're going to need is a microphone cable a means of connecting your microphone to a, another piece of equipment whether it be a mixer or an interface okay now this here is what's called an xlr cable and it connects directly into your microphone like so and then the other end goes into your your mixer or your interface now the next item i'm going to recommend is a pop shield or pop filter now, this is a really important piece of kit because what it does it reduces the air that's blown onto the microphone when your singer or rapper uses words with strong p's and b's it's positioned between the vocalist and the microphone and what it does it filters what's known as Plosives. Now this will cost you about $20 or so. Um, it's very cheap and you only need to buy it once. One thing I'd say though is if you've got a lot of people coming into the studio, uh, you're doing a lot of sessions with a lot of your different guys, make sure you do give it a bit of a wash and a clean every now and then. You want to make sure it's kept nice and clean. Now the next thing you're going to need of course is a microphone stand, something like this. Um, a boom, the extending part like this and you can angle. So you might be choose to record a vocalist or a guitarist for example. This will be perfect, it costs you about $20 and you buy a good one you won't have to buy another one for a good while. Now I'd recommend getting a good stand if you're in um, one of the two groups maybe the producer, engineer, artist type group, or if you're in a band, I'd say um, you want to get one of these. Not so much if you're a straight ahead beat maker, it's probably going to get in your way. Um, you can get, you know, if, you, if you've got the extra cash, then of course buy it, but it's not essential. Now, another item I highly recommend is something like this, um, a reflection filter. This one is made by SE Electronic, but there are many other options out there which are actually a lot cheaper and do exactly the same 
job. Um, the idea of this is to go, let's say, for example, your um, vocalist is standing um, here singing into or wrapping into the mic from this angle. The reflection filter goes on this side um, of the microphone. And the idea is to avoid the reflections coming back um, of the vocals hitting other surfaces and coming back. And this acoustic foam will actually um, absorb a lot of the sound. There are of course other options out there. There's in fact options where you can actually place like a ball over the microphone and you, you sing or rap into that and that actually um, reduces background noise and interference and they work very, very well. Okay, so far we've got our pop filter, or pop shield. We've got a condenser microphone. We've got our microphone stand. We've also got our XLR cable. Now the other end of the XLR cable needs to go into a device just like this. This is what's known as an audio interface. This particular one is made by Focusrite and it's the Scarlett 2i2. Fantastic device. What it does, it converts sound or audio into a format that can be read or interpreted by your computer. So that conversion of audio into digital data is done in here and it's really important. Focusrite have a fantastic range of um, audio interfaces. There are many others out there of course, um, but certainly I have used these with my students, I've used them myself, and I know for certain that they work really well. This one has two inputs. You can have either two mics or two guitars, for example, plugged in and record simultaneously, or maybe a mic and a guitar, for example. There's also the Scarlett Solo, which has just one input. Um, so if you're just recording strictly vocals, then save yourself a few bucks and get that one. Now a good audio interface is important to everyone in each group. For those of you guys who are strictly beat makers and maybe you plug your headphones straight into your computer, what you can do by using an audio interface, you take a lot of the strain off the computer processor. The conversion of the audio that's being played back can be done in here and you can listen through the headphone socket on this and you can output from the output sockets at the back to your monitors, okay? So I definitely recommend it for everyone in all three groups. So, so far we've got the bits of kit that are gonna capture your audio, capture your voice, or capture your guitar or your sample. Now the next stage is of course your computer. The computer is where everything is stored and all of your processing and all of your editing and mixing and all of that is done. Um, and that is important. Now, I've heard it said that it doesn't really matter what computer you use and stuff like that. Well, actually, I beg to differ. It actually does matter. Firstly, depending on the software that you want to work with, um, that will determine whether you use a PC or a Mac. Because, for example, Logic Pro X doesn't run on a PC, so you have to have a Mac. And also, if you've got a PC that's probably running Windows 7 or maybe Windows 8, some of the newer software require Windows 10 and therefore your computer may or may not uh, function well with Windows 10. Now these are some of the things that you need to take into consideration. I'm not saying go out and buy a brand new computer, not at all. I'm just saying before you actually go out and invest in the software, make sure that your computer is compatible and look at the different options that are out there. In terms of software recommendations, these are the ones I've used and I know about. So let's look at beat makers first of all. If you're a straight ahead beat maker doing urban dance, uh, rap, uh, trap, grime, all that sort of thing, then FL Studio is probably the best way forward for you. It's designed for beat makers. I mean, of course you can do vocals and things like that, but the whole design and architecture is for beat making. Another great option for you guys who make beats Reason is definitely up there. You can now record audio in there and it's got a fantastic mixer and it's really come a long way. So again, for beat making, Reason is a great option. Also, Ableton Live. Now for you guys who make beats and maybe you're a DJ as well and you perform live, um, Ableton is a very flexible, fantastic piece of kit that is really easy to use. You've just got to get your head around the workflow, but once you do, it's an absolutely fantastic piece of kit. Now, the other software that I have used and I think is kind of cool is Studio One. Now, that's great for the guys in all categories. It's great for recording vocals, recording complete bands, 
also for producing music, beat making and composition and all of that sort of thing. It's, it's pretty cool and you can use third party software in there. For those of you who are hardcore musicians and are mainly focused on recording audio, whether it be vocals or your band, um, and editing and mixing and that sort of thing, if that's your main focus, then definitely Pro Tools. That there is the, probably the way to go. I mean, there are other options. Now, Pro Tools for many, many years has been accepted as the go-to DAW digital audio workstation um, if you're going to be focusing strictly on audio. Now, there are a couple more DAWs that I'd suggest. First of all, Cubase. Now, Cubase have been in the game for a long time and established themselves in the industry as the go-to software if you're composing as well as for audio recording. They developed the VST or Virtual Studio Technology. Now, VST is a protocol that allows other third-party developers to create plugins and so on that work with other doors. Now, it's come a long way and it's fantastic. It's both PC and Mac compatible. So that's definitely something to consider. Now, my personal favorite is Logic Pro X. Now, that's Mac only and the tools and the plugins and the instruments that come in there are out of this world. I'm not saying it's better or worse than anything else, but it's my application of choice. There are a couple of other options that I'll throw into the mix. Um, Reaper, for example, which is a very affordable um, application. I think it costs like $60 um, and the trial period is like goes on forever. It does pretty much everything that all of the other applications can do, but for a fraction of the cost. And it's also PC and Mac compatible. And finally, of course, Audacity, which is a free to use uh, software. Now this is just an audio recording application and again, PC and Mac compatible. Okay, so now we've managed to get our sound into the computer and we need to hear what we've been recording. Or in fact, we need to monitor as we're recording. So of course we need headphones. Now choosing the right headphones is really important. Now if you're listening for long periods of time in your bedroom, for example, you want something that's gonna be comfortable. And also for your vocalist, you wanna make sure that your vocalist is comfortable. I use Bayer Dynamic DT100s um, as well as 250s as well. I'd highly recommend these Bayer Dynamic DT250s. They are fantastic. In fact, sometimes you forget that you've got headphones on when you're wearing these. What's great about these headphones is that all of the component parts are replaceable. So let's say, for example, these pads um, go, you can order fresh ones. Even the, the whole housing, the speakers inside, the cable can be replaced. So you only need to buy it once and if over time something does go, you can replace it. Of course, if you can't afford something like the Bayer Dynamics, you can get something much cheaper, um, around $20, something like this, which is your Sennheiser uh, HD201. Um, they're, they're decent um, headphones. So make sure you get something with a closed back um, speaker so there's not too much spill from the headphones onto the microphone when you're recording. Okay, so if you have a space where you can actually play the music out and not have to use headphones, then of course, a great set of monitors will really make a big difference. Monitors vary in price. You can spend $150 on a set of monitors or you can spend several thousand. Now, what I've noticed recently is a lot of guys are going for the KRK monitors and they are great, but there are many options out there. What I'd say is look at your budget and in particular, if you get the chance, listen to the monitors, maybe go to the store, or if your friend has got um, a set of monitors, go and have a listen and see if the sound appeals to you, okay? There's a lot of factors that come into play when um, you're choosing monitors, um, not only the monitor themselves, but the space in which the environment in which you'll be working, um, the way the sound interacts with your room, the type of music that you'll be recording as well. So take some time to do some research on the type of monitors that um, you are going to invest in. I personally like Adams and Tannoy's and Mackie's, but that's just me, I'm old school. And as your studio starts to develop and generate some money, maybe from clients coming in or from you putting music out, then definitely invest it in a decent set of monitors because although mixing in headphones is okay, um, it's not ideal and definitely being able to mix with uh, studio monitors makes a big difference. Okay, so far I have covered what I consider to be 
the essentials that you'll need when you're setting up your home studio and you don't need to spend a lot of money get items that are affordable but also give good results now there are a few more things which i'd like to throw in just as options for each of the three groups now first of all for the beat maker i would recommend you get some sort of midi keyboard even if it's a small thing like this this little core nano key to or something else um, the m audio or an akai now a midi keyboard will allow you to play chords or notes into your daw and especially if you're trying to create a more of a human type feel instead of always drawing the notes in a midi keyboard will definitely add a new dimension to your sound now if you're in a band you might well want to track or record multiple instruments at once. If you're recording drums, you're gonna be using multiple microphones um, and therefore you're gonna need multiple inputs into the computer. Now, one thing you can do on a Mac computer is link multiple audio interfaces together to create what's known as an aggregate device and the computer will see them all as one unit. However, a more efficient and better long-term solution is to get a multi-input audio interface, something like what I've got here in my rack. Now, this device is made by PreSonus and it's absolutely fantastic and you can pick one up for around about $300, $350. And if you consider long-term, um, the amount of money you would save from going to the studio, um, you could spend $300 in a single day. If you've got an interface like this uh, for your band and you've got yourself set up in a room or a garage or something like that, you can record and mix your whole project in your own space. For the individual producer engineer looking to record multiple artists or musicians, then definitely I'd say look ahead and think about investing in a multi-input audio interface definitely eight inputs or above now one more thing i'd recommend for you guys in a band or for the producer engineer who is going to be working with multiple artists or multiple musicians tracking them all at once you'd probably want something like this a headphone amplifier with multiple headphone sockets as well as at the back um, you can have um, on this device you can have up to eight people listening at once with their own set of controls um, and it really does add a lot of flexibility and it makes life a lot easier for the band members to be able to hear what's going on whilst um, you're recording with the monitors switched off now there's one final option that i'd like to throw in the mix and that is a compressor now it's not so much for the beat makers but definitely for the other two groups now what a hardware compressor will do for you, something like what I've got here in my rack. A hardware compressor will help you to manage very dynamic vocalists or musicians. Now you're going to make sure that all of your gain staging is done properly. Make sure you check out the video, in fact, um, that I've done on gain staging. That's really important. However, having a compressor in your setup will give you that extra bit of flexibility and control over your input signals. Okay, so that's a lot of information, but don't worry. I've got links below in the description where I break everything down on my website and you'll be able to refer to everything I've talked about, look at the recommendations, and I'm sure that if you follow the suggestions, you'll be off to a great start in sorting out your new home recording setup. If of course you've got any questions or comments, please make sure you drop them in the comments section. It's always great hearing from you. Of course, if you found this video to be helpful, make sure you give me a like. So until next time, thanks for watching. I'm Dr. Deuce. Peace.